Hello, my name is Tinu, and welcome to Craftastrophe. I like to build little things, you know, fun little things. So I'm going to build a little guitar. I'm going to do some woodworking, a ton of sanding and filing. I'm going to build a little fretboard, pour some molds, and even add some real wire strings. So if this sounds good to you, then let's get our craft on. Today, we're going to start with a stick and some tiny screws. And I do mean that they're tiny. Look at that. This is my experimental stick. And the first thing I wanted to test was whether I could use wire for the strings. Yep, sounds like music. So today I'm going to try to build a 1958 Gibson Explorer. It won't be 100% accurate, so go easy on me. I tested making some frets and that came out okay. However, my fret markers did not, but I ended up working that out in the end. You know, guitar is such a precision instrument that I was worried about the strings and the neck not lining up. So I found the original patent drawings and brought those into Photoshop so that I could retrace all the lines with a pen tool. I'm using some thread to triple check the alignment and also to mark out the spacing between strings. Man, I have been waiting so long for you to finally do something interesting on this channel. Don't mess it up. Way to alleviate the pressure, Dad. It'll make you stronger. I'm cutting some slots into a little piece of brass to be the nut on the guitar neck. Oh, that's the thing that holds the string on that uh, other thing. Not the most technical description, but uh, yes. I needed to test that this would hold the strings in place. I'm gonna call this good enough. It works. You need to buy a tuna. Body and neck. Do you know that wood is gonna be too thick for a little guitar? Yeah, but we need some extra wood for this headstock angle. See the headstock where the tuners are is at an angle, so we need that extra material. See how it works? Yeah, but the body's too thick. Sure, but I'm gonna route out certain sections at the specific depth that I need. Why didn't you just use your laser cutter to cut this out? Mm, the laser cutter I have leaves burn marks. So we're doing this old school. I love old school. Me too. But everything has its place. Not a mosquito. Well, they pollinate flowers. Those things are instruments of Satan, case closed. Rough. It took about three days of sanding and shaping to get the neck and the body into a shape that I was happy with. Yeah, y'all want to know how many chores you got done during those days? Absolutely zero. You sound proud of yourself, which is just sad. Oh, look, check this out. This is my uh, depth gauge that I made for the neck. I have different thicknesses for different neck sections, and that's how I was able to get a consistency throughout the neck. You know what's thick around here? The grass. Yeah, you should cut that. Tinu, you know I'm allergic to the heat. Mama says you're allergic to work. Well, I think you allergic to work. Yes, I inherited that disease from my father. No, okay. I use my laser cutter to score where the details of the guitar go. That's gonna make it easy to align the parts later. I was really hoping you'd grow up to be a truck driver or something useful. Ah, I know. Now I wanna try to get a really snug and tight fit for the neck. And since I'm using wire for the strings, it's gonna put a lot of stress on the neck. So I'm gonna add a small brass rod to help with the strength of the connection. Why is it pointy? Oh yeah, let me show you. See, I put this in the neck, and then when I push it into the body, it leaves a mark in the body. And that's how I know exactly where to drill the holes so that these two parts fit together perfectly. 
Now I want this thing to be really strong so I'm going to add some screws. Now unlike some other guitar brands, Gibson doesn't use any kind of bolts on the back of the neck, but we're not going to let reality cramp our style. Hardware. I'm using some polystyrene to make a tailpiece and the bridge. That's the bridge, and that's the tailpiece. Now, the entire time I was working on these hardware parts, there was something bothering me in the back of my mind. In order to get a metal type finish, these tiny parts need to be smooth like crazy smooth, which is difficult to achieve. And while I was stewing on this, I remembered that a friend of mine named Jonathan sent me something in the mail a while back. He sent you some little cars? Hmm, not exactly. Jonathan goes by Death and Strawberries, and his partner in wax is Kerfloss, who's also named Jonathan. And they sent me this wax sampler. Now, if you're interested in what carving wax actually does, go check these guys out at Wax Lab Guys. They'll uh, tell you everything you need to know about it in depth. However, I was interested in their wax to try to use it for a different reason. I wanted to melt the wax down so that I could dip the parts into it, and then hopefully that would smooth out the surface. Well, don't leave us hanging. Did it work? Oh man, did it. Now, I did have to go back and sand a bit and file a bit and also use the heat gun to kind of smooth out the material that I sanded. But man, this technique works really well and look at how smooth that is. Yeah, but you're forgetting the elephant in the room. Dad, don't be so hard on yourself about your weight. You know, you know darn well that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm trying to say is... Relax and take a breath. What I'm trying to say is, is that I don't think you can paint over wax. What I'm doing right now is making a little pickup for the guitar. And you're 100% correct about not being able to paint over wax, unless you're using encaustic paint. What? But I'm going to make a mold so that I can cast these pieces in resin. And that seems to be looking pretty good. When I first started this project, one of my biggest fears was creating the fretboard. But let's just dive on in. Now, I did cut this piece out with my laser cutter because it needed to be super accurate. And after a ton of experimentation, I figured out that I could use lightweight spackling to make the fret markers. A little bit of water helps to smooth things out. And I conditioned the fretboard with a bit of UV resin. And wipe off the excess. Oh yeah, that tends to add a bit of depth and richness to it, huh? Yeah, it also helps protect the fret markers. Now I want to straighten out this wire, so I'm using my experimental stick that I used earlier. This wire is going to be uh, the fret wire. Now this won't straighten it out perfectly, but uh, it certainly helps. Just expanding the channels. And now I'm going to use some epoxy on the edge of this card so that I can get the glue exactly in this channel. And then I just lay in the wire. This is going to be the tuning pick, but it's very one dimensional and fragile. So adding a bit more wood to it 
And then I put some UV resin over it, which gives it a lot of strength. Oh, and you're using UV resin in the little mold you just made. You got it, big guy. So here's some of the casted parts. And this is kind of how they're going to go on the guitar. Shellac. Now, shellac always seemed like a thing that was very difficult to apply because I didn't know what I was doing. Shocking. But I looked up a bunch of tutorials and guess what? I learned something. You see, earlier when I was testing the shellac on my experimental stick, I was brushing it repeatedly to smooth it out. This is totally wrong. But what I learned is, is that you need to get a clean cloth and just do one wipe per coat. Keep that cloth moving, don't stop. Of course, I made a test body and I practiced before I did it on the real guitar. Hey, Dad. What? I got a fun fact for you. Oh, oh. Do you know what shellac is made out of? Some toxic chemical, I'm guessing. No, it's made out of bug poop. Shut the front door. What do you want me to say? It's made out of bug poop. That can't be real. Now, I was able to smooth out some of these little ripples by airbrushing some 91% proof alcohol on top. Now, what this does is melts the shellac layers a little bit. It's not perfect, but it did help a lot. Oh, Tinu bought all kind of specialty paints to try to make this stuff look like metal and uh, it failed. Yeah, I bought some all clad paints and I followed the directions as well as I could, but um, it did not look like chrome. Now, of course, this could be user error. Probably. But I got better results with Testor's paint. I was really disappointed with this because I had to use my airbrush and it's really messy to clean up. Oh, mercy. History. The Gibson Explorer was released in 1958 and it sold for about 250 bucks. They say that they only made about 19 of them guitars in the first year. Yeah, but one cool thing is is that the design was inspired by the tail fins on the Cadillac and Chrysler cars. But that didn't help because the guitar was considered a failure. However, they brought them back in the 1970s and now the originals are worth like hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, it's freaking crazy. Okay, history lesson over. Mic drop. Daddy, that's my good microphone. I was making a point. All right, now I want to try to make a very specific type of volume knob that Gibson uses. So I'm clamping up my drill. Now I got a mini lathe. I used both sandpaper and files to get the shape that I wanted. Then I dipped it in wax, just like I did the other parts. And then I made a mold. Oh, I bet that's UV resin and some uh, alcohol ink, right? You nailed it. Yep. And I'm going to just carefully drip this into the mold. Got to cover that stuff up. And this is my fancy UV light dryer. Let's see what we got. Yeah, that's pretty good. It was actually a lot more difficult than I thought it would be to figure these knobs out. What in the heck is that? And this is both my beautiful and functional knob holder patent pending. No oh boy. Hey, it does its job of holding the knobs, all right? You're not going to get a patent for toothpicks and a rubber band. We'll see. I printed out these numbers on water slide decal paper. Even if you got a patent, it wouldn't matter. Who on earth would buy this thing? I don't know. Do some market research, boy. Nah, it's better to go in blind. Hopeless. I added the water slide decals to the bottom of the knobs, and then I put some UV resin over it so that it would seal and protect it. And then now you're drawing it with UV light. Okay, I'm gonna add the last few details to this little guitar before I show you guys the final results. And stick around after that, cause I'm gonna do a new segment called the Aftermath, which is basically a wrap up of things that I thought I could do better on the project or uh, things that I wanna do in the future.
Also, if you like these videos and want to help support the channel, you can join me on Patreon, like all of these cool people. I do weekly updates with a lot of detail, perhaps too much detail, about my latest project that I'm working on, where I'm hoping it would go, the problems I'm running into. You know, it's more stuff than I could even cover in a YouTube video. So come check me out on Patreon. So what did I learn? What could I do better? Well, a lot. This whole project was about patience and experimentation, and this is the result of all that experimentation. But it was more about figuring out the process of making little guitars than actually making a little guitar. And all of these test pieces helped. Having a couple of practice necks and bodies was invaluable. Now, not everything came out in the way that I had hoped, like the tuning pegs and the finish on the guitar, especially the finish on the headstock. But you know what? This is the first one, so at some point you just have to say it's good enough. However, I'm going to keep refining these techniques and getting better and take a crack at making another guitar. Maybe a flying V.